This is the Dartmouth Ski Patrol presentation for femur fractures. Fractures of the femur are medically important because they usually, but not always, result from a significant mechanism of injury. The associated blood loss can also be significant, up to a liter of blood in a closed fracture. There may be bleeding from the femoral artery, and an open fracture may result in exsanguinating hemorrhage that would merit a tourniquet. Because the thigh is so muscular and fractures are usually associated with spasm of the surrounding muscles, this tends to pull the sharp bone ends through the tissue, making the damage worse and causing severe pain. To help relieve the muscle spasm and reduce the other complications of femur fracture, we use a traction device or traction splint. Traction is only indicated when the fracture is in the mid shaft area or the middle third of the bone. Distal fractures get treated more like a knee, and proximal fractures get treated like a hip. It is contraindicated to apply traction if the patient is actively dying from some other cause and there are other ABC priorities that take precedence. A concomitant injury to another area of the same leg or of the pelvis will usually preclude use of the traction device depending on the particular model being used. If you suspect a femur fracture, expose the area looking for swelling and deformity and any associated wounds or bleeding. Once this is done, cover the patient back up to prevent heat loss and satisfy yourself that the fracture is in the mid shaft area, at least a hand's width away from the knee or hip. Assess and document the distal CSMs prior to traction. At the skiway, we use the KTD, which is the Kendrick traction device, or now the Optimum traction device as they've changed manufacturers. This device has several advantages over other devices on the market. It's effective. It can be stored in a compact package. It's almost infinitely adjustable for patients of various sizes and ages, and there's no need to manipulate the leg during application until you're ready to apply mechanical traction. At $100 each, it's also less expensive than most other devices on the market. Okay, sir, I'm going to begin a focused yeah, assessment of your leg. Do you have any pain in your upper hip here? No. Nah. No? How about here? It starts yeah. to hurt? Yeah. Okay. How about your knee? Does that hurt at all? No. Nah. Okay, so it's just right there? Yeah. How about your calf? No. Any pain in your foot? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to reach up in here and sweep for bleeding. Uh, come down, making sure I'm wearing BSI and I don't see any blood. Um, let me check the skin. I can't see the skin. But can you feel your toes for me? Yep. And wiggle them? You can wiggle your yeah. toes, sir. So you got good sensation and motion. Can you yeah. push down with both your feet? You can even push. Okay. Thank you. This is going to go as high as you can up on your hip. It's not too tight, is it? No. Now I'm going to put the boot hitch around your boot. The red strap is going to go up behind his boot with it this way facing against his, the back of his boot. I'm going to connect the red strap around his boot and clip it back into the bag. Tighten that down. This, green, uh, this black strap with the green end is going to come underneath his boot. Tighten that one down. Now we're going to take the pole and we're going to measure it against his good leg. Are you warm enough? Yeah. How's the pain do, uh, doing? Is it getting better or worse? It still hurts. Still hurts? Okay. It'll look to be about a one. You're going to come in here, be very careful around the injured leg, insert the pole into there. Put 
the yellow strap right over his knee. Now down here, we are gonna, using the blue strap, we're gonna attach the yellow end to the bottom of this pole. Uh, take out the slack. Okay, sir, I'm gonna pull tension on your leg here. Um, it's gonna hurt as I do it, but it's gonna make your leg feel much better. Are you ready? Yeah. Sir, are you ready? Yeah. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. We're gonna make a nice, strong pull, not jerking, one slow, solid movement. How's that feel? Does it feel better? Yeah. Okay, and being very careful, because this is now essentially part of the leg. I'm gonna come in here, I gra I grab this red strap, and we're gonna go like a stoplight. Red on top, green on the bottom. And it's gonna go around the pole. I want this red strap to go right over where we think the fracture might be. Green strap again around the pole. In the calf area. I'm gonna recheck uh, circulation, sensation, motion. I still can't get to his skin. But, sir, can you still feel your toes? Yep. Did you lose any feeling when I put this uh, device on? No. And can you wiggle him for me? Can you wiggle him just okay? And can, yep. can you push down with both your feet? All right, nice. Evening. So now we're gonna put this quick splint on you, sir. It'll just add even more stabilization to your leg. Um, I'll lift and stabilize and you slide in. Sure. All right. All set? Yep. One, two, three. Get it nice and high. textbook, the amount of force applied when pulling traction should be about 10% of the patient's body weight or about 15 pounds of force. In real life, we just want a good, steady, strong pull. As you saw in the video, this will put a little bit of a curve in the KTD pole, but without bending it. And what you're looking for is pain relief from the patient. Usually this will take them from 10 out of 10 and screaming to still 10 out of 10, but able to rest quietly. Now that I've put the hip strap on, I'm gonna apply the boot hitch. Uh, to begin with, we're gonna put this red strap around the ankle. Uh, the important thing to remember here is that this way part of the red strap is gonna go up underneath the, or behind the boot and face the inside, or face the back of the boot. So we're gonna slide it up and under, get it as high as we can. Bring it around, you clip it back to the bag itself. Nice and high, tighten it down. Next step is to take this black strap with underneath the foot here. Make sure it's nice and not tangled. Then we're gonna tighten that part down as well. Get it right up under the foot and tighten it down. Next, we're going to take the pole. Our protocol at the skiway is to remove the boot on the hill prior to splinting, 
only if it's practical to do so. So you need a stable patient with boots that you believe you're going to be able to get off without too much hassle. Rental boots, snowboard boots, telemark boots all come off without a problem. And this depends on the patrol team that you have on the scene and the capability to do this. If it's not practical, if the patient is dying from some other cause, if the environmental conditions are hostile, 20 below, snowing, windy, uh, if it's a racer with race boots that are super tight that are not going to come off, or if you don't have the staffing to accomplish this. If possible, it's best to remove the boot on the hill before pulling traction. So now that we removed the boot, we're going to check uh, circulation, sensation, and motion. So we're going to feel for the dorsal pedal pulse, which I can feel through the sock. It's present. It's strong. Uh, sir, can you wiggle your toes for me? Can you feel me squeezing these? Yep. Can you press against? Good. So now we're going to take the ankle or shoe hitch, um, not the boot hitch, and it's going to go around the foot, nice and gently. And just the Velcro is going to come underneath. Wrap it around, nice and tight. Then again, we have the black uh, black strap with the green end. That's going to go across the bottom of the foot, right underneath. Going to tighten that, make it sure it's nice and tight. And again, we have the blue strap with the yellow and red ends. And it's going to be the same thing. So we're going to take the pull and measure it on the other side.